Now the R square represents the variance explained in each of the endogenous constructs and is a measure of model's explanatory power, also referred to as in-sample predictive power. The R square ranges from 0 to 1 with higher values indicating greater explanatory power. As a general guideline, R square values of 0.75, 0 0.50 or 0.25 can be considered as substantial, moderate and weak respectively in many social sciences disciplines. But acceptable R square values are based on research context and in some disciplines an R square value as low as 0 0.10 that is 10% variance in the endogenous construct is considered satisfactory. Researchers should be aware that R square is a function of number of predictor constructs. The greater the number of predictor constructs, the higher the R square. Now therefore, R square should always be interpreted relative to the context of the study based on the R square values from related studies as well as models similar complexities. So what's the R square of an endogenous construct in a similar study? You should also keep note of that as well. Now how do we assess the model's explanatory power? A limitation of R square is that the metric will tend to increase as more variables are added into the model. Now the adjusted R square metric accounts for this by adjusting the R square value based on the number of explanatory variables in relation to the data size and is seen as more conservative estimate of R square. Because of the correction factor introduced to account for data and model size, the adjusted R square is not a precise indication of endogenous constructs explained variance. So what's the solution? In this case, researchers have asked to assess for F square effect size and is like the size of the path coefficients. In step 3 of the structural model assessment procedure, we need to consider the model's explanatory power by analyzing the R square of endogenous constructs and F square effect size of predictor constructs. 